breaking news to begin our Sunrise Smart Start. Monroe County District Attorney Sandra Dorley just released a new statement following calls from elected officials to investigate her for this traffic stop. We're about to show you this is body camera video from the incident released where it shows Dorley arguing with a Webster police officer after she refused to pull over for him and his partner. Leaders say that she berated the officer, used her DA position with privilege and entitlement, which is why they're asking to investigate her. Dorley has admitted she did not pull over. She was speeding and she said she called the Webster chief of police while arguing with the officers at her house. In her new statement, she issues an apology directly to the officer and describes her next steps. And it was wrong for me to take it out on an officer who's simply doing his job. While I previously apologized to him, I will say it again. I'm sorry. Police already have a tough job, and that day I made this officer's job harder. To the community, I owe you full transparency. Dorley adds she will be referring this case to another district attorney to review outside of the county and to self-report this to the grievance committee. She further says she'll fully cooperate with any investigation. That video statement can be viewed in full on RochesterFirst.com and of course stay with News 8 for further updates. Happening today, a trial begins for a man accused of setting a home on fire, leading to the death of a veteran. We are told this happened in January of 2023, as 41-year-old LaShawn Scott faces murder and arson charges after allegedly starting a fire in the building in question, trapping 78-year-old Christine Cannon on the third floor. She died, and three others in the building were hospitalized. That trial starts today at 9.30 this morning. Also happening today, road work will begin in the town of Chai Lai to completely replace the James E. Widener Memorial Bridge. Keep that in mind for your commute. As the DOT says, this new bridge will be more cost efficient. It'll have a five foot wide uh, shoulder and a wildlife bench so that animals can safely cross. Construction is set to wrap up by the fall. And you'll recall the bridge was dedicated to Private First Class Widener after he served in the Marines during the Vietnam War. Officials with the Rochester Fire Department say they have deemed a fire in the city suspicious. RFD responded just before 10 last night to the vacant home we're showing you here on your screen now. Officials say that there was no one inside, but there were also no injuries reported, further adding that a fire had happened at this location not too long ago. So the cause of that fire will remain under investigation. Some local teens displayed their photography and fashion design skills at a recent showcase. It was in collaboration with Planned Parenthood of Central and Western New York called the Flash and Fashion Experience. Featuring everything from conceptualization to modeling organized by the teens themselves as they're strutting their stuff here. The young photographers and designers are part of a group called In Control, which is a teen pregnancy prevention program run by Planned Parenthood. Well, here in Rochester, we have a lot of young creatives here. So anytime that we can set aside some space, you know, um, provide a platform for them to come in and to just express themselves through their art, that is a way that we can keep them, you know, focused on their goals, on their talent. And the organizers add In Control encourages participants to make educated choices about their health while also conquering their educational and career goals great empowerment there. There's another program providing Rochester's young teens life-changing opportunities and empowering local youth. We will take a look at the impact Teen Empowerment Rochester that group is having here in our region. Aran Spitzer joins us this morning with their progress. Aran. Teen Empowerment has been in Rochester for more than 20 years. The next week they celebrate their success with a social luncheon fundraiser to look at how far they've come and how far they still have to go in supporting local youth. The organization hires young people in the neighborhoods it serves to do social change work. The young participants ages 14 to 19 earn a salary for their work organizing events that are fun but are also socially conscious like peace barbecues, barbecues centered around peace to bring the community together. The goal is to get these kids to think about difficult social issues and work to create change. Doug Ackley, the Rochester executive director, tells me the teen empowerment budget has tripled since 2019. 
I wouldn't do this life work and I wouldn't continue doing this life work um, if I didn't uh, see not only the, the possibilities but the opportunities for young people and our staff team to really just grow and grow this community. And um, you know, when, when, when we look around, we see talents. Uh, one of the things we say about teen empowerment is the young people walk right in this door because they're needed, not because they're needy. And we need all the talents, skills of young people. And I've been able to see that over the last 31 years. I've been able to see young people do incredible change work in this community. For their next mission, Teen Empowerment is working on a reconnection project to get kids who haven't gone back to school post-COVID back into the classroom. The upcoming luncheon fundraiser to celebrate the program's success is on May 9th at 1130 a.m. Michaela. All right, thank you very much, Iran. Well, turning back to your traffic here, a final check hits 655 across the west side. Things are starting to pick up now, so keep that in mind. We have no accidents to report across any of our main thoroughfares. 394, 95, 90 are green. Just remember, we did mention uh, in the town of Chai Lai, they're trying to replace the James E. Widener Memorial Bridge, so as that road work gets started, might be a bit of a slowdown there in Chai Lai. All right, James, we're relying on you here for our Monday morning forecast. Cast, yeah. uh, hopefully not too dreary to start out a lot of folks worst day of the week. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, really temperatures not too bad. That mid 50s, yeah, okay. right, especially when you compare it to average that should be normally in the lower 40s there. We're not even close to that. Uh, but afternoon highs uh, leave a little bit more to be desired. At least locally, and when I say local, I mean Monroe County local north. 104 uh, along the shoreline of Lake Ontario, you are stuck in the 40s and 50s. And it's not a lake breeze. This is just simply cooler air hugging the shoreline. Warmer air moves in to the south. That's Finger Lakes. Uh, once you get into southern Ontario County, uh, Yates County, those spots get well into the 70s, I'd say, for a lot of spots. Tomorrow is the best chance for rain showers and maybe a couple of thunderstorms moving in before we quiet down into May. All right. We'll start off May a bit wet here. James, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your morning here with us on News 8 at Sunrise. Next update in 25 minutes. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.